and wow. I was 18 years old and literally like the money I made that summer um, was the most I ever made obviously my age at the time and first thing I did and went got out of high school got my back or uh, got into college got my back in and and bought myself a Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> Automatic film credit. Yep. <laughs> bought a Love Hummer, it. and uh, it was it was. Funny. That was back when Hummers were cool. That was yeah. Two, this is two thousand six. Yeah. Got a Hummer, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It's funny because Brian Haney had an H two truck. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I want a Hummer too. You know what I mean? Like I gotta get one, and so I bought one, and yeah, sure enough, uh, this end of December hit, and I'm like, crap, I spent all my money. I made 50, over $50,000 in two and a half months and it's all gone. What's up everybody, Sam Taggart here with Oscar Luna in Dallas, Fort Worth area right now. We just got done watching the Cowboys game. They win? Yes, they freaking kicked ass. They <laughs> smashed on the Falcons. Oscar's got a suite at the freaking on the floor right in front of the Cowboys, Cowgirls, cheerleaders, and whatever you call it. Like, Unfortunately, they're in the way of the view, but. Yeah, happens. you can't even like, see the game because you're so close. <laughs> Cameramen everywhere, but no, it was, it was awesome. And I was just out here spending the weekend with these guys doing a training on recruiting for their leaders. And, you know, I was like, why not get the GOAT? He is by far one of the most Golden Doors ever in a year. I'll give him his quick little introduction, and we're gonna dive in. We're gonna dive into what he does on the doors, selling, how he runs his company and sales, his philosophies there. It's gonna be a really good podcast. So Oscar last year was a quadruple Golden Door winner. So those that don't know what that is, a Golden Door in solar, it was 100 installs. He did 382 solar installs by himself, and that's the most anyone's ever done in a year. But on top of that, he did 416 security accounts installed himself. And my best year in alarms was 400, and that's a golden door. And so to do 382 or 86 solar and 416 alarms means that is the ultimate version of hustle. That's like the ultimate, like I, I don't even know how to like fathom that, like in, in, in my mind. So he would double up, he would pitch an alarm and add solar, he'd add pitch a solar, he'd add an alarm. And uh, he would do it all under 30, 40 minutes. And you know, to build that art, being able to do it in a quick way, to be able to go in and, um, just like make that happen is incredible. So honored and privileged to have him come speaking at Door to Door Con. And it was a great weekend out here. And just to get to know his team, his people, and the respect that they have for him in the hustle is is, uh, is awesome. So no, welcome, uh, welcome out. Don't no, thanks, man. I know our guys had a, a f awesome time with you out here. Learned a lot. <laughs> Dude, and it, what's crazy about Oscar is he's like, I'm learning still. Like he, okay, so I'll, t I'll give you this. The, like when you got up and introduced me at the training, <laughs> You were like, dude, I was out with my guys. One, he's still out there. His team did a th he's gonna do a thousand accounts this month, if not more. And he's like, when I was out knocking this week, and I go, first off, owner out knocking, leading from the front. He goes, I saw these guys training on this pitch, and I learned there's these two lines that they said that it was just fire. And I was like, okay, you literally sell more than anyone in the in the world. Yet he comes back learning from these first year reps, second year reps, and you learn some cool fire. What are they? I, I'm curious. I, you had me on bothered. Like, do you um, remember what they were? Just the intro, like the way they approach the, 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 the different way to approach. They're teaching the setters how to obviously go out, set appointments and everything. And the, the way they brought it up, these new slicks where we're going to start advertising for our teams. It's, it's awesome. Like, I was, I, I was amazed. On, like, I was interested right away. Like, man, these guys. They made it, he was so monotone and how he basically pitched it and was training their, their group of news. He had like 44 setters in his, uh, on a blitz right now here in uh, North Dallas. And and we were out there visiting them and man, like we were impressed like with how he was training their guys, their approach. And I'm not sure if he wants me to be sharing it or not, but <laughs> wow, these new videos will always be releasing first of January. I'm, you'll, I'm sure a lot of you will be hearing about it, but no, it was amazing. I was, I was telling Tanner Hale, like, dude, that was awesome. Like, I want to start using that in my pitch. Like, it was amazing. My biggest thing is, like, I tell people, like, my motto is, if you're not learning, you're dying. You got to learn something. Some, every day, you got to learn something new. That's awesome. So, what, tell me, so let's kind of back up. You got into door-to-door. -door. You've been in door-to-door -door for a long time. 
Um, you started in alarms or did you start? Yes, so I originally started back in 2006. I was 18 years old, straight out of high school. I was recruited by my college, one of our college system coach. Uh, they're like, hey dude, come out knocking doors. I'm like, doors? Like, yeah. Like, people do that? Yeah, people do. I literally, that was like a little pyramid scheme going on. It's like, oh yeah, like if you bring your friend and they bring their friend and then you bring their friend and you'll have like a big old team. I'm like, oh, all right, well, we'll see. But um, but yeah, so basically uh, I was 18 years old, finishing high, uh, high school. Uh, I had a four year four out of Boise State. So I like, you know what? I have nothing to lose. Um, I got college paid for from through my academics. And I was like, it's worse than there. If I go out for the summer, I'll just have a great experience in living in Seattle. And if I don't make money, I like at least met new friends. And so like, hey, I have nothing to lose. So I went out and uh, I was actually under uh, a company called APX Line before I went to the event. I was under Brian Haney and Vic Martinez's office. And I crushed it. Like those two and a half months I was there, I finished off with 220, 126 alarms in two and a half months. And wow. I was 18 years old and literally like the money I made that summer um, was the most I ever made, obviously my age at the time. And first thing I did, I went, got out of high school, got my back, or uh, got into college, got my back in and, and bought myself a Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> Automatic film credit. Yep. <laughs> Bought a Whoa. Hummer and uh, it was it was funny. That was back when Hummers were cool. That was yeah. Two, this is two thousand six. Yeah. Got a Hummer and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It's funny because Brian Haney had an H two truck. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I want a Hummer too. You know what I mean? Like I gotta get one. And so I bought one and yeah, sure enough, uh, this end of December hit and I'm like, crap! I spent all my money. I made fifty over fifty thousand dollars in two and a half months and it's all gone. So what did I do? Basically, that's when I met with Brian Haney and Vic. Like, hey, you know what? You should manage a team. So I decided, like, hey, yeah, this is the right thing. I had a lot of people, a lot of people my uh, my age at the time going to college. Like, dude, what are you doing? You're 18 years old. You own the Hummer, and it's not your your parents didn't buy it. You bought it yourself. Like, what are you doing? So honestly, thinking back, it's part was part one of my best recruiting tool for me in Boise out in Boise State. Uh, I recruited about 44 guys. To go with me the next summer i ended up managing a team in uh california um yeah so managed a team with california that year we were did great um obviously the whole you know how the summer sells you recruit 40 guys 25 end up panning out to the until the end of the year and but no we ended up killing it i think we did shy of 1300 accounts 1400 accounts that summer so once again two and a half months because a lot of these guys came from boise state so we didn't finish school till end of may Oh, wow. um, and then we started school in second week of August, so you only had that two and a half months of going hard. But uh, yeah, so those after those two years, I learned a lot managing under, um, under, um, or running my own office under Vic Martinez and Brian Haney. Uh, that following year in two thousand nine, I decided to do Pinnacle. Did Pinnacle that year, then after that year, ran into a dealership called uh, Palmetto Security out of South Carolina. And they were trying to actually recruit me and my guys to go with them instead of using Apex. Like, dude, get rid of the middleman. We'll pay you directly. You know, we're, we're selling accounts through Monotronics. That's how they pay us. And that kind of opened up a whole window for me at that time. I was like, you know what? I'm better off getting rid of Apex at the time, and, or Pinnacle at the time, and it's just starting my own dealership. And that's why, uh, end of, end of uh, 2009, I started with my company called Zenith. So it ended up um, being a Zenith, Zenith security company dealership out of Monotronics. Wow. So 2009, and then you got into solar, and you guys were West Texas. Like you were, you just owned that area. Right? Yeah. So we ended up doing alarms. Uh, so still, we started running alarms. We've been doing that for 12 years. Um, we ra solar came in our neck of the woods in 2019 uh, when net metering began open in West Texas. At the time, West Texas was our number one office in alarms. And uh, yeah, so we basically, net meter all happened there, and I was like, you know what? This is the opportunity for us to get on it ASAP. It's because I always wondered, like, why isn't solar here in West Texas? Nothing but flat, above, nothing but flat land, dry area, lots no of sun, tall, yeah. yeah, lots of sun, no tree, tall trees, and it made sense. And what net, net meter happened, um, I brought John Bankhead involved with me. He ended up being my partner, opening up the solar side, and we ended up crushing it. Like, dude, like, it's, let's go open up together and dominate it. And, we started convincing half of our team from alarms to do solar. Uh, they were still skeptic because they, they had people in the, in the alarm in the solar industry were like, yeah, solar's great, but you'll take three to four months to get paid because that's how long it takes to get installed. 
And so we started off, we ended up being, uh, doing an EPC company with um, Elevation. Mm. We used them for a while. We ended up basically almost double dipping because we had we had all our mesh electrician license on, on uh, with Xenia Security at the time with Texas. Mm. So we made a deal with Elevation where we can use our own int installer guys, and so we sell our own installation, but they had to pay us to use our own, our own installers. <laughs> okay. So that kind of basically opened the, the 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 doors for us because at the time we were selling and installing our own our own installs, and that's when we realized we got our permits in our hand. But elevation still, after two weeks of selling it, we got permits. They were still wanting us to wait to install it, which made no sense to us. That's when we trying to we were figuring out the puzzles. Like you know what, why not do the same thing? Let's get rid of the EPC company, do everything ourselves. And sure enough, beginning of 2020, we ended up doing everything in house. So you can get quicker installs. Yep. So that brought it up from 45 installs with elevation down to we when we started doing ourselves, we're down to 30 days. 14 days now west texas we're doing them in three to five days um our average install time frame right now in uh, texas is 14 days wow guys like that i mean for anybody that's in solar that's fast i mean obviously if you're in roofing or pest that doesn't make much sense but like it's 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 cool and that's kind of what you guys have been known for is like hey we don't have to wait three months to get paid let's try to get them out there quicker in three days five days 15 days you know what i mean and actually see you guys getting paid so i want to know i mean i've been having these questions it's fun to get you on a podcast and ask these questions how do you juggle personal sales recruiting and like running a company you know what i mean yeah so at the beginning obviously in 2020 um yeah we were uh yeah we were i was wearing multiple hats at the time obviously daytime had the office manager office running the team and then after uh, at evening was running, helping out with the permitting department, the installation team. Um, so what we ended up doing is it's uh, me and John had basically start delegating more, a lot of our workshop to more, hiring more people to basically help us out with like the installation side that we had an ops guide, a permitting utility. Um, so we started ma maximizing our time on the right spot, on the, what needed us the most. Yeah. So obviously mornings we were there just to pump up the installations because we treated our installers like our sales teams. We kind of motivate them to install more. Um, so we had incentives. The more they installed, the more they got paid. And oh my gosh, it was so funny. They showed up, so one of Mia's jobs, they like showed up to install just like at random. And she was like, yeah, my customer called me, they're here to install, but it's like, we still need to get the roof done. <laughs> and they're like, oh, shoot, the roof guys are too slow. We're already here. We're ready to go. <laughs> you can tell, like, they were like, we just want to get this thing installed. Yes. And we kept the same strategy. That's I love what, it. Yeah, that we kept it. Like, our, our uh, mentality was, you know, you know, we come from the alarm industry. Like, yeah, we, put a we, hole in the wall. Put a hole in the wall. Yep, we start panicking when our technician's not at the house within, within 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Yeah. We start panic, calling the technician, hey, man, how long, how long till you're here? Obviously, we want to make sure the teenager shows up, punch the hole in the roof, then ask questions where they want sensors later. Yeah, it's the same mentality. We want to bring our technol our our installers to get their ASAP because we noticed that the that was one of the uh, the missing link with solar here in Texas is that time frame waiting. A lot of customers that people will sell 100 accounts as a team, but only 40 to 50 percent of them will be going installed within two or three months later. Yeah. So we don't want to make sure we do, we want to figure what exactly what we didn't want to make sure that happened what's happening to us. Yeah. So we figured out, hey, let's focus on our fast installs, keep everything in house, stock our inventory in our warehouses, you know, four, four to five million dollars worth of equipment at all time every week. So every time we as soon as we got a permit in our hand, we glass go pick up, yeah, go exactly. pick up panels and throw them on. I but yeah, that. but yeah, it was all delegating time and um, even twenty twenty that was the year. Obviously, I was going out hard on the doors. Is we were managing the office and every day after five o'clock. Uh, what actually helped me succeed and everyone's like dude how in the heck did you get motivated to continue selling every, yeah. day, every day is i held myself um accountable with every day i had a couple of reps want to knock at me and i was like hey just be my outside my door every day at, uh it would be outside my door at five o'clock today we'll go knocking with you and your buddy so my accountability was knocking with someone else every day yeah because you need to show off you don't want to look bad. Yep. They're going to make you get out there. You're not going to be like, uh, no, let's just hang out here and chat. It's like, exactly. no, I came here to get trained, not sit in your couch. It's a huge hack. And a lot of people, that's one of the reasons I tell them to recruit is it's just to recruit themselves to the doors. Even if that guy sucks, it's like, at least you got to get out there. And the money you made because you went out is much greater than even the override you might make on the guy that you're, you're taking yes. out there. 
And no, that's one of the things I tell my, even all my managers right now is that the best way is to leave from the front, taking one or two guys with you every day on the doors. So that way, as you're closing, you're teaching the new person how to close like you. Yeah. So what, what, let's, let's talk about the sell itself. Like when you pitch one, well, we can get into cross selling. Cause I think a lot of people are trying that they're like, I do pest and solar. I do alarms and roofs and solar. Right. And they're, they're trying to couple products and things like that. So we'll get into that. But the other one is just like, what is, yeah. When you, when you can condense it down to 30 minutes. And this is the thing I learned from Matter of Chance. It's like he did a thousand alarms in a year. Another probably, Oscar and Adam are probably the two best ever. And his set was 10, 15 minutes. And you're just like, how do you talk about something that quick, be that efficient? It's, like, how do you, how do you, how do you, how did you slow that or speed that sales process up? Um, honestly, it's keeping it simple. Like my, uh, even with alarms back when I was training our guys how to sell, like is the less information to give out that you think, you know, the less, un, um, less important information to give out the, the better because that way you're obviously going straight to what the customer cares about what's the monthly rate what's the contract term and what am i getting with all, the, all, all this cost mm -hmm. so when you're able to get everything all in one presentation at the, at the beginning of the door you're basically able to at that point just assume the sale and continue on what they want so you get it you you because a lot of people they think hold price until the very very end 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 and then it's like all right now let's talk about price now you get into another boxing match in the sales conversation Correct where some people, are you one to be like, hey, there's monthly monitoring, it's this and this and this, as long as the numbers make sense, there's value, we're gonna do this. Or, yeah, kind of like so walk us through that. Especially the market we were at, um, a lot of our competition, we're charging 120 bucks a month or 130 bucks a month. So with, for us, we weren't charged, our max we can charge was 64.99. So we, right away, we knew our price was uh, yeah. half the cost of our competition. So when we pitched our guys like, hey, this is what this package comes with, for this price or you can add two more cameras for three dollars more a month it's up to you what's more important to you the more cameras or less cameras with the rate so we basically was a yes yes question to what they wanted to hear okay so we made it straight to the point and then going into solar once i went in the house pitched them security closed them security went hey by the way since you're one of our elite customers for alarms you also qualify for a year free home security that's one of our how we base i basically attach the solar to the security so you qualify for a year free of security because that's 600 bucks mm -hmm. and you can wrap that into the solar loan or you could eat it in a commission, whatever. Um, and they're like, oh, you're free. And then would you sell them right then and there and build a proposal yeah. or would you set up another appointment? Nope. Then and there. Because that was well, my technician, I was an alarm where the technician is on his route within 20, 30 minutes. So my technician is showing up or, on, or in already in the house, I'm already pitching them solar. Okay. So I'm showing the transition, how what their bill is right now, what the bill's gonna be, you know, going solar, and building that emotion why everyone's doing it. And tell them why it's, it's important to do it now with the bundle deal, than doing it later. Because you saved the 600 bucks. Exactly. It's so brilliant. So you would start an alarm. So today, if you're not selling an alarm, um, what would you pitch selling solar? Like, do you have like a pitch, obviously just more of a solar pitch? It's more of a solar pitch, basically, just credit urgency, you know, hey, the best part, because one of the things we have a good relationship with, with Goodly, where we're allowed to give a customer, customer $1,000 without affecting their rep's commission. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do when we were at the door pitching to customers, like, hey, by the way, we got this Black Friday special, where as long as you sign up before this Sunday, our company's gonna pay for your entire bill till July of next year. So when their payments are 150 bucks a month and the $1,000 we're giving them, it's covered. Break, exactly. But when you break it up in small pieces for longer months, it sounds more appealing to the customer. Okay, so you're like you're gonna get a free year of power. Yeah, um, and so you're selling them on that short term. I want to save money now. Yep. Instead of like, oh, over 25 years, you're gonna save thirty thousand dollars because sometimes it's hard to conceptualize that for a homeowner, and they're like, correct. Some some homeowners, uh, we obviously we like to pitch them both. Like you know, this is what your bill will be in five years. Or this is what your bill will be in ten years. But they understand it. But what's still just like the alarms, like when you have a technician, like, hey, my tech's in the area already. If I can have my technician here in the next 10 minutes to get your system started, I'll give you, I'll waive your activation fee. Yeah, yeah the exact same mentality where we trained our reps the same way where, hey, since our reps, our installers are already doing your other neighbors, we'll put it, we'll set it up where y'all refer to each other. So we'll get it up where you guys get no payment until July of next year. Oh, because you're already on this referral game. Exactly. Love that. Love that. 
Okay, so what are some common tips or maybe common pitfalls you see amongst sales guys? Because you've trained sales guys for decades. What, um, what common things do you see sales reps falling into? Why are they all not doing 400 alarms or doing 300 something solar deals? Like what, what, what are they running into? What's... Um, it's honestly the same thing we're running into too, still to this day. We have a lot of reps that get to complacent of where they're at like mm. hey i'm happy making eight grand a week or ten grand a week and so it's even there's times we were doing big incentives in our company just to motivate them but we changed it around where we're basically now it's almost like bragging rights we, we brought the whole alarm mo, um, mentality like hey the atmosphere like hey basically whoever sells this so basically is the the big, baller, big yeah. swing guy in, in the office yeah and so we changed it up this last few months and it's been helping a lot um bringing these small competition throughout the summer throughout the months weeks and then obviously right now we have a big competition for the end of the year we have the top four we we have the top two sellers of top two closers in the company um from now to december have a free trip to the uh, super bowl that's awesome yeah so so more so about clout than it is about commission because the common pitfall people get into is they look at their bank account, their bank account's bigger than what they're used to, and then they stop working. Correct. And all of a sudden it goes down, and then like, I better start working again. And that's just this you know, roller coaster of commissions that we keep running into. So it's cool. Yeah, yeah. that. And then also we have uh, some investors we brought into our, our own company. So we're helping these young guys at 21, 22, making 30 to 40 grand a week. We're showing them how to invest. Like, dude, you can own two houses by the time you're, this year's over if you do it the right way. So that's been helping a lot. Yeah, because it chalks their money away. That's helped me a ton. It's because when all of a sudden I was putting all my money in real estate, I still was broke and it still had that like, exactly. where's all my money? But it's like it's in an equitable asset you can't access. Keep going and making more money. And that's been my biggest tip to keep myself hungry no and that's what's that's what's been helping a lot a lot for our company this last uh second third quarter is basically showing the reps where to put their money the right way because don't get, like don't get me wrong we still have reps that go out blow it out on the weekends which you know you play hard work hard play hard but still we want to make sure they don't do that every weekend that hey it's fun to go splurge yourself once in a while i want us to talk to that because i mean guys Oscar drives a Lamborghini, a Bentley, a Rolls Royce, and has a jet. So, you know, they see, they see his 15,000 square foot house, they see this, that, and this Gucci shoes and Gucci sweater and <laughs> nice wall, you know, and, and it's like, they think, oh, I should have that stuff too. But what they didn't see is you started in 2000 fucking freaking six, right? Like, like, I can't stress this enough, guys. Like, I don't swear much, but like, I'm... I'm with these, like, all these sales guys today, like at the Super Bowl or the Cowboys game. And I was like, can I wake some of you guys up? Like invest, like they're all talking about, I'm gonna get this new Tesla and I'm gonna get this. And they're like, oh, and I'm gonna, and granted you got a Hummer in 2006, but you were broke as a joke and yeah, used it for recruiting. But I'm like, if people realize that this has been 12 years of owning a company and beating your head against a wall and it wasn't always jets and nice cars, no. right? Like, it's, a, it's what, basically what I tell the guys right now. Like, and so what I did is I learned my mistakes from my first year. So the second year when I managed my team, um, I, managed, I think it was Brian Haney gave me the book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. And that changed my mentality. So instead of coming back that, same, that second summer making over 130 grand that summer, I put 80 grand into a, a, a duplex. There you go. And that's when I obviously started training my guys the same way. Like, hey, let's just start investing it. Yeah. But yeah, I, no, it's true. I have a lot of reps like, oh, what, why don't you think I should buy a car? Like, dude, buy, it, buy yourself a house first and then buy the, the toys. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because that house is going to appreciate. And it's funny. Even, like, the stuff that they don't see, too, is the conversation we had in your Rolls Royce. You're like, I bought, or the Bentley. You're like, I bought this Bentley. There's only 38 of them. And I bought it for three fifty, and it's now worth four seventy. I could sell it today. Like you bought it as like a like almost like a sports card, and you kind of buy or a gun buy. Is it's like I know this thing's going to appreciate in a smart way. I'm going to get it at a discount so that if I had to resell it, I I know there's some equitable value in that. But I think a lot of people they don't see the strategy there too. They're just going for the look. Yeah. And, um, no, and I, investing is such an important game that we all need to understand and learn because even just this weekend you probably spent 50 grand just on your team as far as the box suites me coming out you had dinners we ate at nick and sam's and it's like culturally investing to get a return there like what are some of your pro tips for owners 
managers out there that you found good investments in your people to pay back dividends as far as their work and stuff like that? Um, my biggest thing is taking care of people, they'll take care of you. Is if you talk to them, a lot of my employees are with me, they've been with me for what eight or nine years, they're still with me today. Is the fact that I, no matter what, I'll take a bullet for them. If there's like, even when it comes to customers battling with other companies, we'll still help them win it. It's, a, it's basically taking care of your, of your people in front of you. Um, I, I had a great compliment for you last night. So, Oscar gets a lot of crap in this industry because you take bullets and you're not willing to, you're like, you don't back down and you're like, I'm gonna take bullets for my people. Like, I defend my turf, I defend my team. And a lot of times people don't, re- like, they, that comes off to competitors is aggressive. And I'm like, and okay, isn't that how business is sometimes? Like, I look at, wasn't Walmart pretty aggressive by putting Walmarts yeah. right next to Kmarts? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm sure Kmart's like, well, we're already here. No, Walmart was like, I'm gonna plant a Walmart right across the street and you guys are gonna be out of business in a few years. And wasn't Netflix aggressive when they went after Redbox? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. like, that's business, guys. So here, here's what's interesting is, I'm, I'm, I'm with this guy last night and he said one of your competitors was you know coming into the turf and it was like annoying because you kept taking the deals back like you were swapping out all the deals and he was like dude it was so annoying so i had to go to oscar and ask for truce and respectively you created that and then another competitor came in and wanted the truce and he's like no we're gonna run these guys out and i've got your back and me and you are gonna go dominate and he's like the fact that he like had my back and went to bat for us now we're working together you know what i mean like he just had like mad where before he hated you now he's like mad respect i'm in the gang and it was just a cool compliment i was like i see that and i see that your people would go to bat and bullets for you too because you're like in the trenches with them you show that you care you invest in them and that's a huge compliment like not many leaders have that i'm giving everything to you and i got your back so good job yeah no thanks appreciate that but that's one of the biggest things I tell my my reps, my managers, VPs, and regionals is you gotta leave from the front. The best way to win respect from you, they don't want they don't want a Hitler behind them. They want a, a Gandhi in front of them, leading them from the front. Yeah, showing them you know how to how to do it. So what what are some of the big struggles that you weren't expecting? Like let's say I'm running a solar company, I'm new, or I'm running an alarm company, or I'm I don't know like things that you're like, man, I wish I would have told my you know ten years ago self these roadblocks are going to come (laughs) navigate this like what are some of those that you've had to go through um honestly is is your investment as far as your the company wise like obviously my first three years i was making good money to do my whole alarm money obviously at the time and i was putting my money in in the wrong in the wrong spot instead of my reps now i obviously changed it around like to this day going back to like what we do this weekend is we have this manager achieve with all the vps managers the golf event is is investing more in them obviously like to help them grow but we have speakers like you and uh, jo- uh jordan, jordan Belfort Belfort. and Milet, all these guys because we want our guys to continue growing and learning themselves because a lot of these guys have a lot of potential they don't realize how much potential they have until they see it themselves or yeah. hear, hear it themselves yeah no it's so true um what about as far as just business partnerships or business moves or i don't know like is there any kind of like well back in 2011 i got my face kicked in here or like i don't know anything like that that you've had to kind of weather um yeah obviously like don't try to my biggest thing is don't try to go big all at once like mm. this for example when we first started doing solar or email alarms I was trying to compete against Vivint, which there's no way in hell it's going to beat Vivint at the time. You know what I mean? Like, we're just a small fish in a pond with a big shark. It's just a little, what helped me on the alarm industry is if I just focus on my company and not worry about my competition, it will work out for its best. Yeah, because I think a lot of people play to the hand of their competitor instead yes. of they play their own hand. Yep. And I think one thing that you've done well is, you know, I'm sure even when I got to Solsius, I kept telling Kelly, I was like, hey, we got to open up this market, open up this market, open up this market. And I'm sure everybody's like, when are you going to go to New Mexico, your neighbor state? When are you going to go to Oklahoma? And you're just like, "Uh, there are so many homes in Texas. Let's just do what we do best. And it was really centralized in West Texas at first. And now you've just recently started to really go all all over, right? But it's like, 
you did a very good job at saying, I don't care if people are making tons of money in California. doesn't mean I need to be a California solar company, right? Yes. So that's one of our, our biggest things that we have a lot of managers that live in California or New Mexico, for example, or even Oklahoma. Our biggest thing is like, there's so many opportunities here in Texas. Like we obviously have four main offices here in Texas now. Our goal is once we, we're doing um, over a thousand installs a month, then yeah, we can start talking about the markets. But till then, let's just start focusing what we have in our own backyard. Yeah. No, I think that's a pro tip because if you chase somebody else and play their game, they will always beat you at their game. Is that's why you're chasing them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> there's a reason they're there, and you know, and 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 they also found a niche. They said, "What are we known for? What are we good at? What do we want to be seen as?" And I think it came down to we want to kn- be known for fast installs. We want to be known for this. We want to, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of companies they struggle because they try to they say, "I want to be known for all of the things." But then it's like, I've, there, there's probably 5,000 solar companies I don't know the name of. Or I don't know what they're known for. I'm like, you're just another dealer of Titan. You're just another dude that was pissed at his manager and left and now that you got your six guys. Congratulations. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got to kind of wrap up, but like any other advice that you'd give the door-to-door space? Um, honestly, just time management. Uh, I feel like, especially like right now with the holidays around the corner, you'll be surprised. Like one of our biggest time of knocking is right now is a lot of these summer sales guys that go home for the summer or go back to school. This is like from from October to March, we're always our biggest sales numbers because we have less competition on the doors. Mm. So just utilizing your time correctly. Like right now, a lot of people are thinking the opposite. Hey, it's winter time. Let's go do holidays. Let's go do trips. Like don't get me wrong you know, work hard, play hard, still take your your trips, but maximize the time that where a lot of your competition, whether, you know, like, like, like uh, they say, like, whether they're dreaming of dreaming, you're oh, obviously, you're making that dream come true. Love so that. take advantage of the time and the opportunity that we have right now, especially with the whole market with the way it is and the tax credit that we have, uh, especially what's about to have with the tax credit too, it's huge. It's huge, it's huge. Um, guys, my biggest advice to the DD space would be exactly that. I think so many people, I call it death by business cards or overanalyzing, creating this paralysis by analysis. It's, there's this element of like, I have to have all these things in a row before I actually go to work. I'm like, dude, just go to work. I'm sure you've broken things on the way. Like, I'm sure you've had to be like, whoops, my wake is pretty big because you're just overproducing. You're over, you know, you can figure out some of the back end logistical things as you just do. And I think so many people are wasting this like harvest and the harv- the, the crops are going bad because they're all sitting out there and other companies, other reps, everybody else is going to go harvest your own harvest. And yeah, it's like, it's, and that's one of the things like, obviously it's like, like don't go wrong. We learned it ourselves, you know, years ago when we started my own company is, is we were on the same path. Like, Hey, let's take the winter off and focus on the summer and our own competition was in our own backyard. I blitzed West Texas all winter, all the time. <laughs> I was this, this backyard. I, he's like, and Sam, that was you. So, I love it. Hey, but thanks for having me out here. This has been a blast. This You've taken care of me, and you, yeah, it's been really fun to work with you guys. Like, big shout out. Like, in the university, you guys are the number one most hours watched. They're the most wanting to get trained. They're the most investing in themselves. Like, guys, that's a that's a big thing, and I, I don't say that lightly, so I'm proud of you guys. That's awesome. awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. No, hey. my guys loved it out here. They learned a lot from you. Thank you. Okay, share this, like this, send some love. Peace. See you guys in January.